Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking smoke effect using Adobe After Effects and Mir 3. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels will be fine at a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. That's fine, just press OK. So once we got that, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new solid. So this solid, I'm just going to be calling it Mir. And it doesn't matter about the color because I'm going to be searching for an effect called Mir 3. And so this is a paid plugin from Red Giant. So if you don't have it, can you please download it if you wish to continue this tutorial. So once we have that, we have to change a few settings in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the geometry and we're going to change a few things. So the first thing that we're going to change is the vertices X. We're going to change that to 200 and we're going to change the vertices Y to let's say 120. And then what we're going to do is we are going to go to size and we are going to make them X, Y, Z individual. And so now we can change the X and Y values. And so the X value I'm going to change to about 3000 and the Y value I'm going to change to about 2000. Now, if you've done that correctly, it should fill your entire screen. Now, if you're working in 4K or any other resolution, you will have to play around with these two settings to make sure that it fills up the entire composition. So once we have that, the next thing that we can do is we can move down to Fractal. So I'm just going to close Geometry and I'm going to open up the Fractal and we're going to change a few settings over here. The first one is the Amplitude. We're going to bump that up to about 450 and we're going to change the Frequency. We're going to bring that down all the way to 80. And now you've got this kind of uh, smaller Fractal thing going on in here. But we have to do a few things because it's not moving at the moment. So we have to animate it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to animate the evolution settings. So I'm going to hold option on my Mac or alt on a Windows PC. And I'm going to hit that stopwatch icon to bring up my expressions. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write time times 10. And now if you've done that correctly, now you'll get a slow moving kind of that fractal thing happening there but the whole point of it is because it's supposed to be smoke it's supposed to go pretty slow so if you want it even slower you can bring down that value there so anyways so moving on so the next thing that we have to do is we have to change a few things we're going to come down to the offset z and we are going to change that to 280 so we're just going to offset that a little bit and then we are going to have a look at the scroll X and the scroll Y values. So we are also going to animate them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to again hold option and click on that stopwatch. And then for this one, I'm going to write time times 30 and times is the asterisk if you are wondering. So now we have a bit of movement from left to right. And we are also going to do the same thing for the scroll Y. So again, I'm going to hold option, hit the stopwatch, but this time I'm going to write negative time times 50. And so now if you've done that, now you will have movement from left to right, but also from down to up or up to down. And so now that's looking pretty good because all we want is the smoke to kind of keep on going this way. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go into the material settings. So I'm just going to close up Fractal and I'm going to open up the material settings. Now, what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to set the opacity to let's say 20%. So to bring it down. So now it's looking a little bit more like smoke. So now once we've done that in the material settings, I'm going to open up the shader settings. And in here, I'm going to change a few things. The first thing is I'm going to take off the ambulant occlusion. So I'm just going to make sure that that's off. And the second thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to bump up the normal effect to let's say 100. So now that darkens it a bit. So the blacks are a bit blacker and it kind of looks a little bit more like smoke as well. So now once we've done that, we need to move down to visibility. So we're going to change a few things here. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to bump up the far or we're going to actually bring it down to about 8000. And then what we're going to do is we are going to change the values for the fog start and fog end. 
So the fog start, what we're going to do is we're going to bring that down to, let's say, 4,000. And for the end, we're going to half that value and bring it down to 5,000. So now once we've got that, the next thing that we need to do is we're finished with the trap code stuff here. So I'm just going to close all of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for an effect here. I'm going to search for fast box blur. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change a few settings. I'm going to bring up the blur radius to about 20. And I'm also going to bring down the iterations to let's say one. And so now you've got this kind of blurred smoke happening in the background. The other effect that we are going to put on this layer is we are going to put some turbulent displace. And so what we are going to do here is I'm just going to leave everything as is, but if you wanted to change some of the settings, for example, by going to bulge or twist or turbulent smoother, they all create different kind of uh, variations. But I do like the turbulent uh, variation because it is supposed to be smoke really. So what I'm going to do here is all I'm going to do is just um, animate the evolution. So I'm going to hold option and then I'm going to write time times. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have the turbulent displace moving with the smoke as the smoke is animating up as well. And so I think that's looking pretty cool, but we're going to make it look even better. So what we're going to do now is we are going to duplicate that layer. So I'm just going to close off all the effects here and then I'm going to press command D to duplicate that. And then you can rename it if you want. So maybe I'll rename this to me too. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change a few settings in here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my uh, trap code mirror settings and I'm going to open up the fractal and I'm just going to change some of the values here. So I'm going to bring down the amplitude maybe to about 380 because you don't want it to be the same as the first layer. So the more that you can change it, the better that it will be. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to also change the frequency. So I'm going to bring up the frequency to let's say 100. And so now you can see what's happening. Now we have like two kind of sets of effects that, that are happening here. The next thing that we're going to do is on that layer, I'm just going to press on my keyboard E twice to bring up all the ex expressions that I have. And again, I'm just going to change these values. So the first one, instead of time times 10, it's going to be time times 15. And then the next ones are going to be time times 50. And the last one is going to be negative time times, let's say 80. And so now, if you've done that correctly, now you have two sets of different kind of smoke effects going off together. And to be honest, that, that's looking pretty good, but we are going to change it a little bit more. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get back into fast box blur on the second layer. And what we're going to do is we are going to change that to four. So you can see that this one is not as blurry as the one behind it. Now, if that's too sharp for you, you can always bring it up, maybe five, four and a half, something like that. Then what we're going to do is we are going to go down to turbulent displace. So I'm just going to press E twice to bring up the expressions again. And I'm going to change the time here. So I'm going to make this one go a bit faster. So I'm going to times it by five. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have two sets of things that are moving a little bit different to each other just so you can see them together on the same composition. And I think that's looking pretty good. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to come in and add some color. So I'm just going to add a new solid and I'm going to call this uh, gradient. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the famous effect gradient ramp. And I'm going to get some colors from Color Hunt and put them in here. So these are the two colors that I'm going and getting from Color Hunt. So all I'm going to do is put them back inside of After Effects. Cool. So I'm pretty happy with that. You can change, you know, some of the positions of the gradient if you want, but I'm going to keep it 
like that. So now once we have that, the next thing that we can do is just drag it to the bottom of the composition, just like that. And we're gonna add a camera. So I'm just gonna go right click new camera. And I'm just gonna run with, let's say a 24 mil camera. And I'm just gonna press okay. We're gonna change the settings anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna open up the camera options and I'm gonna change a few values here. So the first value that I'm gonna bring up here is I'm just gonna bring this value up to about 2600. All right, so we're kind of zooming it in so you can see what's happening there. And you know what, you can even animate that as well. So I'm gonna bring it, maybe I'll bring it back down a little bit more. So nearly around 2000. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to bring up the aperture. So we're gonna bump this up to about 400. And so now what else we can do is we can have a look at uh, some of the camera settings. So if I press C on my keyboard, what I can do is I can have a small animation that moves the camera from one side to the other. So now the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to animate the camera. So I'm just going to hit the orbit around uh, button over here or you can just press C on your keyboard. Now if you press C again, it's going to move into three different things. So this is the icon that you want. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a stopwatch for position, make sure I'm at the first keyframe and I'm just gonna move it slightly one way. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it to the other side and then I'm gonna move it back the other way diagonally. Now you don't wanna go too far here because if you go too far, the effect won't work that well. So now what's happening here is now the camera is kind of rotating around this smoke. And I think that's looking pretty good. So now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into the camera options and we are going to have a look at this uh, zoom setting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the stopwatch on the zoom. I'm gonna move to the end of the composition and I'm just gonna increase it slightly. So now we have a few things happening. We have the camera moving from one side to the other and now we have a small zoom giving this a little bit more movement. So I think that's looking pretty good. So now once we have all that, the final things that we need to do is we need to add a adjustment layer. So I'm just gonna add a new adjustment layer and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for the effect called curves and on the RGB channel, I'm just gonna create a S bend so I'm just gonna move this over a bit and I'm gonna bring that out a bit. And you can see what's happening there, kind of really darkens the colors and I think that's looking pretty nice. The next thing that we can do is we can add some noise. So I'll just add another adjustment layer and I'm gonna search for the effect called noise and I'll bring this up to about eight or 10%. So now we have this cool looking smoke that goes across the composition. So now once you're happy with that, the final thing that we can do is we can just go back to our duplicate of our Mir 2 settings and just add some drop shadow. Now you don't wanna go too crazy here. So maybe you wanna increase the softness a little bit and maybe even bring down the opacity. So just so it's got a few dark bits um, as the smoke goes through. I think that's looking pretty cool. And that's about it for this tutorial. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this short tutorial on how to create smoke using Trapcode Mir 3. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.